check. Welcome back after the break. Uh, so before the break, we were looking at how to recognize God's um, leading, even as the Holy Spirit, um, you know, um, teaches us or guides us in the plan of um, God. So we're basically looking at um, um, the fifth one, the fifth guidepost, recognize the leading of God's Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, um, you know, um, bears witness in our spirit. That's what we looked at in Romans chapter 6, verse 16. The Holy Spirit uh, bears witness in our spirit man, which means the Holy Spirit teaches us, guides us, um, speaks to us. Uh, he testifies what the truth is. Uh, he leads us or guides us in the plan and purposes of God. And where does he do all this? In our spirit. Okay. John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15, um, you know, um, can somebody read that? Thank you. So here, um, Jesus is revealing what the Holy Spirit is going to do when the Holy Spirit comes in John chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. It says here, whatever the, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, says whatever, um, where is that? Yeah, whatever he hears, okay, the latter half of verse 13 says, whatever he hears, he will speak. So who is he uh, referring to as a he here, whatever he speaks? Okay, whatever he hears, he will speak. So whatever he hears, he will speak is whatever the Holy Spirit hears, he will speak. Uh, so who is the Holy Spirit going to hear from? Okay, from God, okay, or Jesus. Okay, whatever he hears from Jesus, he's going to speak to whom? He's going to speak to us. He's going to reveal it to us. He's going to reveal it to you and me. So even as God speaks his plans and purposes for your life, for the next season of your life, okay, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to each one of us. Okay, and it also says here that he will tell you things to come. That means the Holy Spirit reveals not only what God's plan and purpose is for your life, what he wants you to do through that plan and purpose for a specific season, but he will also reveal it what is going to happen in the next season. Now, why is uh, Holy, the Holy Spirit revealed to us what is going to happen the next season? Why? To enable us to prepare. Thank you, Nina. So to enable us to prepare. Yes, sir, Karen. Okay, so uh, Karen has a good question. It says, why uh, does God reveal it through the Holy Spirit? Now, um, we understand God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Trinity. Okay, um, three in one, which means all have the same essence, the same character, the same attributes that make God, God. Each one of them are God, but they have different roles, okay? But all of them are one. So it, uh, it's the Holy Spirit's role uh, to minister to each one of us, okay? God the Father, sovereign, authority, plans, executes. God the Son, the one who came down, brought salvation, made man, uh, uh, made uh, God manifest to each one of us, initiated, revealed the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. He brought it here on earth. Uh, he, he was the perfect atonement sacrifice. He redeemed us from sin. Um, and, uh, you know, he purchased mankind back to the sun. He took back the keys, the authority from the devil. 
uh, he's given it back to man. So now we have the dominion. The church has the authority, the keys of the kingdom of God here. Now he's gone back and he is doing the role of a, he's a great high priest interceding on behalf of us. So we can't, for our human minds, we think, okay, Holy Spirit is going to reveal it to us. Okay, a G, when we want something, we, Jesus, okay, for sin salvation. Want to know something about God's plan, okay, you know, we, uh, we think of God the Father. But God does not operate, he does not operate, okay. Okay, where is God the Son, okay, you have to go do this, okay, where is the Holy Spirit? <laughs> you know, they don't do it, they are three in one, they work in perfect unity and in oneness. So when is the Holy Spirit revealing it to us, it's actually got the, what, it's in the heart and uh, mind of God the Father, God the Son is with. All three are one. Okay, good question. Okay, we have a question? All right. Okay, so the Holy Spirit will tell us things to come. He will show us ahead uh, things that are going to happen. And he bears witness in our spirit. Okay, um, so... Um, now I give you an example. Uh, so the Holy Spirit is uh, bearing witness means, what does it mean when it bears witness? He's, you just feel in your heart that, you know, the next year, 2023, uh, there's going to be a big change coming in your life. When you're praying, you're just sensing that. Okay, you're just sensing it's an inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, maybe you share it with your spouse or you share it with your family or you share it with a good friend. And uh, you say, you know, whenever it's and I have this strange feeling, an inner witness of the Holy Spirit that in 2023, I'm just giving you an example. You know, there is going to some come some change that is going to happen in your in my life. OK, now um, you need to. When the Holy Spirit is bearing witness, you you want more clarification. What is going to happen? So you know, um, um, you know, you can ask God. God, what is it? Okay, what is this change that you're talking about? And the Holy Spirit can clarify. Maybe you're getting a new job, and in your new job, you know, it entitles you to travel more. Okay, so you're going to leave this job. You're going to get a, a new job, and the new job entitles you to uh, travel more so when you're when you're thinking when the holy spirit reveals this to you what are you going to do you're beginning to think on those terms you're beginning to plan you're beginning to uh, set things in your life because you're saying okay now the holy spirit is telling me i'm going to get a new job and i'm also going to travel so maybe i need a travel bag i need more clothes or i need to you know who will take care of my pet when i'm not there or who will take off care of my family or you know you you think you're already trying to make uh, arrangements and 2023 comes and you get a new job and your uh, new boss calls you and he says oh, here's your ticket you need to go to this place you're traveling uh, you know you have to uh, start off the project there and then you say oh god thank you the holy spirit thank you for revealing this to me ahead of time that i'm going to get a new job and i'm going to travel and i'm going to you know and i have already uh, you know, uh, made arrangements and not caught unaware. So when you have the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is telling you something, now don't just keep it to yourself. Don't shelf it. Okay, when it comes, let me see. Why does the Holy Spirit reveal it to us? Is so that we can ask the Holy Spirit for more clarification. So ask God, what are you telling me? What are you revealing to me? What's going to happen? What do you want me to do? And then you make the necessary plans and the necessary arrangements and that also the Holy Spirit will help you to emotionally and to mentally to prepare your and physically to prepare yourself okay and when it happens you are ready you thank God and say wow God you know you're so great you reveal it to me and you're preparing it uh, preparing me for that okay uh, so you have to be listening to the Holy Spirit so if you want to know God's plan and purpose for your life it's important for you to listen to the Holy Spirit, right? How do you know the so Holy Spirit is talking to you? It's through practice. Now, if I blindfold all of you in class, and if I bring Pastor Ashish here, none of you can see him because you all are blindfolded. But when you hear him speak, you can say that's Pastor Ashish because you've heard him speak a couple of times. If I bring Pastor Dinah here, you will say it's Pastor Dina. If I bring Pastor Nancy, you will say it's Pastor Nancy. You don't even have to see. Okay, why? Because you're so tuned to listening to their voices. Okay, so also you need to bear witness with the uh, 
uh, you know, to, to bear witness to the Holy Spirit, to understand what the Holy Spirit is telling you, you need to tune in and you need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is um, telling you. Okay. Also, you can say, you know, any season of your life, you can say, you know, Holy Spirit, um, what are you telling me about my life now? Okay, now I'm in Bible college. Is everything okay in my life? Is there something you want me to change? Um, am I doing what you want me to do? Am I in the right place where you want me to uh, be? Even as I'm in the Bible college, am I doing the right things? Is there some things in my life you want to reveal, to show, you want me to change uh, in my life? And if the Holy Spirit is telling you, obey. You know, when you do that in little things, when it comes to greater decisions in your life, you can just say, Holy Spirit, tell me what you want me to do. Or I'm praying for this person, show me what you want me to say to that person. Or I'm praying for this person, this person has come for a word of wisdom or knowledge, they're depending on me, show me. How do we, it doesn't just happen all of a sudden, it comes through practice. Just like, you know, you through practice you can say, okay, this is, this is the teacher who's teaching us, even though you're blindfolded, because you have had the practice of listening to them. So you need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and when he teaches you, guides you, and leads you, you will know that this is the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, first Corinthians chapter two, verses nine and ten. We've already read this verse before. Uh, I think in the first class. Um, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Uh, you know, nor enter in the heart of man the things God has prepared for those who love Him. God has prepared amazing things for us, amazing plans. But who reveals it to us? It's the Holy Spirit who reveals it to us. So for us to know, uh, hear it from the Holy Spirit, we have to tune into the Holy Spirit. We need to listen to him. And, um, you know, um, um, sometimes the leading of the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand. Right? It's not understandable. Like, for example, John chapter 3, verse 8, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he says, the wind blows where it wishes. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming from and where it is going so is everyone who is born of the spirit okay we can't explain the dynamics of the wind the same way also with the holy spirit you know you know the holy spirit is there but you can't explain everything you can't ex understand everything okay you can't explain everything about him what you need to do is you just need to you know believe uh, and bear uh, even as he bears in uh, witness in your inner spirit you know, you just follow his leading. So, for example, when I was in the 12th standard, you know, I was um, praying what God wanted me to do next, and God called me to full time ministry. So, the Holy Spirit just leading me and telling me, come into full time ministry. And, you know, I didn't want to go into full time ministry. That was not what was my plan. I wanted to do, I want to become a cardiologist. You know, I want to do something great in life, big in life. And um, for one week, I was going back and forth with God. God was saying, Bible college. I was saying, I want to do this. I will also minister doing all of these things, but not Bible college. The end of one week, I said, okay, God, you know, I, uh, but I didn't make, there was not commitment that I will go to Bible college. Okay, then, uh, you know, I applied after I got my 12 results. I applied only in one college and, you know, I never got admission. It was quite uh, shocking. My sister, who was studying the same college, she's a topper in that college and she knows the principal very well. When then spoke, he said, no, my father tried all his, you know, high profile, uh, 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 you know, connects, nothing happened. And, and everybody is wondering why nothing is happening for this, you know, for her. And I was quite taken aback because I had, I had to waste one year. I had to stay back at home. Just imagine staying back at home for one year is, you know, and everybody asking, what are you doing? You're saying you're staying at home is quite uh, shameful. And then when I remember going to the restroom and crying and saying, God, you know, why did you do this to me? You know, uh, and God is saying, remember you said you're going to Bible college? It's like, oh my gosh, no way. I've already forgotten about it. So then I realized it's better to do what God wants me to do. And, you know, uh, of course, I went to Bible college. And, you know, it was to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And once I did that, you know, the grace of God followed me. Uh, God provided for everything that I needed, even to the extent of finances. You know, uh, my father was rather upset that I was in, going to Bible college because the whole notion in my days, in the 1990s, when I went to Bible college, was, you know, only those who are dropouts, 
in in school they can't study they'll go to bible college life is easy out there you don't have to do anything in bible college it's just a whole uh, you know roller coaster ride very easy and my father was thinking that i'm going to, i'm taking an easy route in life i was taking an easy way in um, in in life and that was not what i had planned he didn't know that i didn't want to argue with my parents my father so you know um, i said okay god if you want me to go to bible college you take care you know so i had a, 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 a an organization here who said they'll pay half my fees and i didn't know where the other rest of the half was coming so it was almost uh, about 80000 way in the 90s which is quite a bit uh, and i went to bible college first time i traveled in the train all by myself it, of course another student from my church who came along with his father uh, i didn't have anybody along with me my parents first time out of home first time you know washing clothes um, i stacked everything and you know uh, you know washed everything i couldn't move my hand the after washing my clothes because i've never had the practice but all of this training you know you have the grace of god but you have the calling but it's all hard work you know and i didn't know where i'm going to get money for my toiletries you know to buy all my stuff so i was uh, working studying and working in the bible college so working in the library or working in the in the in the store we had a store in our bible college doing something just to get some money to buy my toiletries you know and um, uh, when i went in the the first week you know the in the bible college uh, i got a letter from this organization they said they'll pay me half the money but i'll have to serve them for 7 years 6 years because i studied in bible college for 6 years i have to serve them for 6 years and i felt that they were cheating me because initially when i went to bible college they did not tell me this clause and then when i just said you know god what do i do you know uh, what do i do now i don't know what to do first of all they are not paying me full then i have to you know give them 7 years and i don't want to work there because i don't know what my calling is and the holy spirit was saying i will take care see so i just wrote and told them i'm not interested in the money thank you i didn't know where i'm going to get my fees from every every uh, you know uh, uh, you know period of time to the first, in the first year i used to get these reminders from bible college saying that you know um, you have to pay up your fees you have to pay up your fees finally it is to come to march if you don't pay up your fees you won't be writing your exam and i said god hands up i don't know where i'm going to get the money from i can't ask dad i can't go back home because i made this choice i've come here you have to take care and you know i just pray and the holy spirit is saying you know i will provide i just depend on that and then those reminders stopped i know that my fees was paid and uh, you know god just amazingly took care of that i don't know who paid it i just know god took care of it and i'm 100% sure it was not my dad who was secretly paying because at the end of it he asked me how did you manage when he came for my graduation he realized the whole thing that it was not a easy ride he said how did you manage everything and then i said it was god and that's when he realized that it was truly god who called me and now he's the one who supports me more than anyone else of course i learned my faith and my spiritual walk from my dad and he supports me now in ministry but if it was not the inner witness of the holy spirit i wouldn't have survived in bible college i wouldn't have survived in life i wouldn't have because i was not here i was not there you know so it's important for us to spend time listening to the holy spirit so how does the holy spirit to speaks to us Okay, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through our inner witness in our spirit man. He tells us what is right and wrong in our spirit man. Okay, um, sometimes we don't get a witness when we ask God, God, what do I do now? Okay, I'm in this stage of my life. What do I do now? Sometimes when you don't hear anything from the Holy Spirit, it means God is telling you just stay where you are, be faithful, hard, uh, you know, work hard, uh, be committed. when it's a next season to move i will tell you so when you don't hear anything from the holy spirit don't think that is god is not answering you it's just god wanting you to be there continue what you want to he has for you to do now sometimes you know when you find an uneasiness when you're praying about something there's an uneasiness that means the holy spirit is saying stop don't step in don't venture don't do it okay the holy spirit also speaks to us through the written word of god okay now when i was had to go to bible college you know i didn't know whether i was had to go it was god's voice i didn't understand i said god i'm going to church today you have to speak to the man of god 
and you know what the man of god who pro, uh, preached that sunday morning said he, he said you can't serve god and mammon you can't serve god and money you have to make a choice and you know that came like a rhema word hit me and god said you can't choose secular job and serve me you have to choose one secular job or serve me and he says and that man of god says choose god he's telling us to he's telling choose god and that came just you know so sometimes it's a quickening uh, from god's word a rhema word something that you read in your quiet time somebody preaching somebody sharing okay but also you need to be very careful that you don't you're not very emotional when you're going to read god's word you're very emotional you will look at everything in god's word thinking that this is god speaking to me about this specific thing so for example you are in love with you know all young people here in our online class i mean sorry in our in person class so you know you fall in love with somebody and um, you know a girl or a boy and you know every time you read the scripture somehow you see that person's name i mean you know so because you're so emotionally ingrained into you and you go to your pastor and you say you know pastor every time you know i'm in love with this person every time i'm reading the word of god you know uh, you know this um, uh, this verse is um, coming you know this this verse is telling me and portraying god's uh, the, the name of the person that i'm in love with so pastor saying okay tell me one verse and you tell one verse and he says i can't see that person's name what's that person's name you tell the person's name but i can't see that person's name uh, in the bible you know all i'm reading here is god said go to jerusalem you know and is that person's name jerusalem no is not jerusalem but you know i can see the holy spirit is showing me pastor so you know we can't get too emotionally carried away you know when we read god's word to misinterpret god's word okay we need to be very ca uh, careful okay uh, every scripture you read uh, that will you know when you're very emotionally carried away will kind of somehow imply to the situation that you are in that you need to be very very careful sometimes the holy spirit gives you ideas impressions ideas in your mind shows you pictures okay impresses upon your heart you don't see anything i i receive impressions i don't see anything i don't uh, hear anything but it's an impression i just feel that inner impression when i start praying the words what the holy spirit wants me to communicate comes but it's just an impression sometimes he reveals to dreams and visions okay uh, joseph's uh, story okay to dreams and visions sometimes to prophetic words but we need to be very careful about prophetic word um uh, you know who we are listening to now how do we know is the holy spirit speaking one way god's word tells us is the holy spirit speaking to us is the holy spirit will always glorify jesus so a good test for us to know whether it's from the holy spirit or it's your emotions your mind speaking or it's even the devil speaking is is that uh, you know does this glorify jesus okay so that is to uh, about how to recognize the leading of the spirit of god any questions about um, the fifth guide post recognize the leading of god's spirit any questions any questions from our online students okay if there's no questions we'll move on to the sixth guide post recognize the circumstances okay now god leads us and guides us into things that he has planned by orchestrating circumstances that means he arranges the circumstances he arranges the situations he arranges the events the setting uh, setting so well that we can just step into walk into god's plan and purpose for our lives okay now sometimes when god closes one door in our life it means he's opening another door which is the right door for us so for example you wanted to go and study uh, do biotechnology okay but god closed that door and he's opened the door for bible college that means you know he's orchestrating circumstances in your life leading you uh, to serve him or to be into full time ministry okay are you able to understand yes all of you with me okay sometimes uh, he he sends people in our life uh, who would create opportunities for us uh, people who will push us who will tell us uh, who will speak into our lives uh, you know speak prophetic words in our lives um, and all of this you know is how god orchestrates situations to guide us into what he has planned for our 
lives okay now we need to be aware that some circumstances that comes in our life uh, can be caused by the devil and can some can also be because of our own choices so we need to be very careful of course some situations god orchestrates some situations is by our own choices and we think it's god doing everything and some is can also be because of the devil okay um but you know god's hand is at work in the circumstances circumstances and the situations in our um, life let's look at um, i think it's second chronicles 16:9 i hope that is right second chronicles 16:9 yes yeah second chronicles 16:9 can somebody read that please second chronicles 16:9 Okay, so God's eye is scanning or is looking out of the whole world and he's looking for whom? Who is he looking for? Those who are, their hearts are loyal to him. And God says, if your heart is committed or your heart is loyal to me, then I'm going to exert my strength on your behalf. My strength is going to be manifest in your heart weakness so one of the areas god exerts his strength or empowers us with his strength um, uh, on your behalf is in the circumstances and in the situations of your life okay so god's hand is at work in the situations and the circumstances of your life psalm 37 was 23 and 24 says the steps of a good man or the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the lord okay and he delights in his way, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his righteous right hand. So the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So we can't explain this. How does God order my steps? You know, how does he tell me, okay, this is the way to go? We can't explain it. But all we know from God's word is God is ordering the steps of a righteous man or a good man. So as a believer, you know, all of you are righteous in God's eyes. He's imputed his righteousness on you. So, you know, you have this assurance that your steps are ordered by the Lord. Okay. So why don't you turn to your neighbor and say your steps are ordered by the Lord. Be excited. Don't be sleepy. Don't be sleepy. Don't sleep. Be excited that the steps, your steps are ordered by the Lord. Why don't you tell your neighbor that? The steps are ordered by the Lord. So wake up, your steps are ordered by the Lord. Okay. Now, how does he, how does God order our steps? I don't know. Okay. But all the Bible says is that God orders my step. He will just lead me and show me. All I need to do is just trust in him. And all I need to do is believe in him. So somehow through some situations, through some circumstances, God will make sure that you're, you're putting your steps in the right place, okay? Where he wants you to put your steps, you're putting your steps in that place. He guides you and leads you through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you in the way you need to go, the choices you need to make, which door you have to enter, which door you shouldn't be entering. So we can make mistakes, like it says here in this verse, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his righteous right hand. Which means sometimes we can fall, we can make a mistake, we can, you know, we can cause an error, we can fail. But it says, though we fall, we will not be utterly cast down. Yes, we make mistakes, but even though we utterly fall down, it's not the end of everything. Okay, God's hand is still at work in us okay uh, so there are some points here which um, on page number 23 you can look at it uh, god orchestrates the circumstances in your life uh, but when god orchestrates situations and circumstances in your life what should you do you must respond okay how do you respond fearfully anxiously what happens when you when you're afraid about what God is leading you into. Or oh, you're very anxious. What does what happens? 
you will hold yourself back you will not step into it because you have so many doubts you're very anxious when you're very anxious you cannot hear the holy spirit speaking very clearly to you fear is a hindrance that stops you from pursuing god's plan fear is something that stops you from listening to the holy spirit okay so when you're fearful you will not be able to step into the plan god is orchestrating for you or the situations he's orchestrating in your um life okay um so god you know orders your steps he will do everything he will orchestrate situations but what do you need to do you need to step out in pray. take the first step he will show you the second step but if you're fearful if you're anxious you will miss out on what god is telling you showing you uh and you know you will say god you know what are you doing with my life why aren't you showing me something god is saying man i'm showing you but you are so fearful you're so you know your thoughts are filled with fear you're not able to step into what i am showing you or what is good for you so when you're fearful you will miss out on what god's good plan a good pleasing and perfect will for your life is so what do you need to do you need to bind the spirit of fear you can say god yeah i'm fearful remove this fear remove my unbelief help me in my unbelief remove it help me to step out in faith okay so everything will not be easy when you step out don't think you know i take in the first step everything will be easy it's not going to be easy you have to work hard okay the next thing here we see is god orders circumstances and events in our life that are in line with his plan and purpose God also positions people, places and things to help you walk in his plan and his purpose. It's not going to be easy. Um but some of the circumstances that God is orchestrating in your life can be very very challenging, can be very very difficult, okay? Um you know, only when you crush the grapes do you get the juice. Okay? So sometimes, you know, God will take you to difficult circumstances, not that he hates you, not that he wants to, you know, make life difficult for you. It's because he wants to bring out the best in you. And what do we need to do? We need to discern the circumstance, we understand what God is telling us and showing us and we need to respond. Okay? Um uh and we need to get over this thought that everything in our life is going to be easy. uh you know sometimes god is going to stretch you you know when a mother is uh, you know conceiving the baby in her womb you know what happens to the womb is it the same size no it stretches right what if the mother says oh my god i don't want uh, my womb to stretch but i want the baby is it possible no it's not possible okay your womb uh, basically expands it stretches so you're saying god i want to do great things for your life, for you for your kingdom use me greatly god in a powerful way in a great way you know that's what we want to uh, we pray make me like you know maybe you know some great man of god and then when god is stretching you saying god this is not what i asked you know god is saying if you want to be great if you want to be that great man or woman of god then i have to stretch you a bit you know and but we want everything easy and god is trying to stretch us so only when the mother's womb is stretched only then the baby can grow and she can give birth to a healthy baby okay the last um, point here is not every circumstance that god orders in your life is going to be easy pleasant uh, but it always has lasting values okay when i went to bible college it was not easy i had to wash clothes i had to work i had to study i had to pray for my finances uh, i had to get money to travel back home Uh, for my train fare so it was not easy but you know, through all of this why did god do this in my life not because he hated me nor he want he wanted to teach me a lesson man you wanted to go and do secular you come here i'll teach you a lesson not that he's not such a cruel god is because he wants to teach me that you know ministry is not easy no ministry is not easy you know from day one in ministry i never depended on people and that is why i'm able to last in ministry for 22 years because ministry is not easy you know why because i didn't depend on man or woman i depended on god anything i would run to god so god was teaching me depend on me because ministry is that dependence on him and that is why i was able to last so all of these circumstances that god brought in my life was difficult but he taught me this is how ministry is 
It's going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult. You have to labor. You have to work hard. Okay. Um, and in uh, Hebrews chapter um, uh, 12, verse 5 to 11, okay, um, if you look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6, it says, The Lord chastens those he loves. Okay, or the Lord chastens those he thinks as his son. So God chastens us means he lovingly corrects us. Okay, like a father corrects a child. Okay, now how does God correct us? He uses his word, he corrects us to the Holy Spirit, he uses godly people in our lives to tell us what is right and what is wrong. Okay, so one way God chastens us or corrects us is also by ordering circumstances in our life to bring us into line with what he wants for our life. So that is one way that he chastens us or corrects us. Okay. Um, now, sometimes, you know, we get into some circumstances in our lives because of our wrong choices, not because of God. Now, for example, Moses. Moses, he realized when he was in the palace that he's actually not an Egyptian, he's a Hebrew. And he was all zealous to set his people free from slavery. What did he do? In his zealousness, he killed an Egyptian. He thought nobody would know. And the next day he saw two Israelites fighting and he went to stop them. And what do they say? Don't think you can kill us like you killed this uh, the Egyptian. He realized that his sin was exposed. It was not covered up. So he runs away. And how many years? 40 years. And it took 40 more years for God to bring about the deliverance of his people from Egypt because of one man's wrong choice over zeal overpassionate 40 more years okay um and we saw the the poor people of israel had to suffer in egypt for 40 more long years there's another example given here in deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 9 to 10 a very interesting story you know um um about how uh you know um you know um when the israelites uh, you know, another example, not from Deuteronomy chapter 8, I don't think this is the right reference, but, you know, uh, when the Israelites, um, uh, you know, God told them, told Moses, send the 12 spies to Israel, you know, tell them to uh, to spy the land of Canaan, and they spy the land of Canaan for how many days? Uh, 40 days, they come back, they bring back fruits, and um, 12 of them go, what do the 10 of them say? Ten of them say, hey, no way, man. We can't go and take that place. Those people are like giants. We are like grasshoppers. We can never fight them. We can never win. But Joshua and Cable and say, if God told us we can go and occupy that land, he will give it to us. And these 10 people spread a, a bad report. And everybody, this is in, um, uh, it's in Numbers. Okay, I think Numbers chapter 20. And everybody, the people start grumbling. You know, he said, why did God bring us into the desert to kill us here? And then what do they say? Let's find a leader. We don't want Moses as a leader. We'll go back to Egypt. And God gets so upset with them and so angry. And then he says, you know, just like you have spoken. They said, did God bring us here in the desert to kill us here for, our, for us and our children and our, and our wives to die here? So God said, the very words that you've spoken is the very words that will happen all of you will fall dead here in this uh, in this desert so for for so he said you know 40 years for 40 days they spy the land of Canaan one day equal to one year okay so 40 years they had to keep on journeying in the desert and after everyone died God took Joshua and Caleb and those who were the generation 20 years and below they took them he took them into the promise land so was um, a delay of 40 years god's intent god's situation and circumstances that he ordered no okay it was their own unbelief that caused them to you know die in the desert and delay by another 40 years but even though they wandered in the wilderness you know god took care of them he led them he fell fed them he did wonderful things for um, them okay so sometimes we can make wrong choices 
uh, and we can go through uh, difficult situations in our life. Uh, but if we keep our heart open to God, even in those situations, God can take us to the land of promise. He can still provide for us because we are keeping our heart open to God and uh, we are um, you know, willing to change and agree that what we have done, the choice that we made, is a big mistake. Okay. Sometimes the devil can oppose us. Okay, so he can send the wrong people uh, to hinder us, to stop us. Um, uh, okay, sometimes he can also, um, you know, send people to hurt us and stop us. Uh, so we need to discern God's working in our lives, whether it is God doing, bringing about the situation, it's, um, it's my own choices, my own actions, or it is the enemy. So if it's God orchestrating the situation, what do you do? You just step into it, you go with God. If it's your own actions, you stop, you change, you ask God for forgiveness. And if it's the enemy is, that is opposing you, what do you do? You bind the enemy and you press in with God, what God's uh, plan for your life is and you fulfill and um, continue with God's plan for your life. Okay, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 26 says, Ponder the path of your feet and let your ways be established. So ponder means think, you know, whether it's God, whether it's your choice or whether it's the enemy. Okay, so that is about... Um, you know, recognizing the circumstances which God orders in your life to help you to discern and know what God's plan and purpose for your life is. Any questions? Any questions? No questions. Any, any questions from our online students? All of you with me, all of you in the online students with me, following with me? Yes? Is it clear? Any question? You have a question? No? Okay. Okay, so we'll move on to the next um, uh, guidepost. Okay, recognize godly counsel and wisdom. Okay, so how do we know God's plan for our life? It can also be through godly counsel, women and men of God who gives you godly counsel. So, counsel basically means advice instruction or sharing of knowledge okay so counsel just basically means somebody's giving you an advice somebody who is sharing their knowledge with you or giving you an instruction now counsel is not a command you have to do this okay they're just sharing their information they're just instructing you giving you some advice so who do you ask counsel from you ask counsel from godly men and women okay who have a deep, strong, firm, tested relationship with God. Now, uh, you know, if you have a problem with your parents and you go and talk to people in your same peer group, what will they say? Yeah, you know, all parents are like this. You know, all, even my parents they always tell me, don't do this, don't go here, don't watch this. I don't know why they don't want us to have freedom, why they don't want us to enjoy life. Now, if you go to your peers who are in the same you know, same thinking mindset and the age group as you, you know, they're going to say an yes to what you're saying. Or if you're going to say, you know, you know, this is a person I love. Say, oh, wow, exciting, handsome, charming, you know, very good looking person. Why don't you pursue? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? But do we go and tell our parents, you know, this is a person I love? Then they'll say, okay, you know, have you, how is his family, this and that, and they'll ask you all the questions and you don't want that. You go, you want to basically go to somebody who say yes to your, what you are thinking, right? But it's important here to seek counsel, godly counsel from people who are mature um, men and women of God who have a deep, strong, tested relationship with um, with God, okay? I'll give you an example from King Rehoboam. You know King Rehoboam? Uh, son of King Solomon. So we had uh, Saul, the first king of Israel. Second king was uh, David, then his son Solomon. And after Solomon was his son uh, Rehoboam. Now when Rehoboam became king, you know, his, um, his um, uh, the people from his, um, you know, from, from his uh, country come and tell him, you know, your father made us work very hard. We know Solomon built a temple, built so many palaces. You know, you please relax things for us. Don't make us work and labor so hard. 
So Rehabom very smartly says, give me three days, I will consult and I will give you an answer, which is a good thing that he did. Now he first goes and consults the wise men of his father's time, you know, elderly people, you know, with much knowledge, with much experience. And what do they tell Rehoboam? They tell Rehoboam, yes, listen to the people, you know, uh, don't put hard, force them to hard labor, you know, relax things for them. Why does, why do they give him this uh, advice? Because, you know, to their wise counsel and knowledge and years of experience, they know that if he, if Rehoboam agrees with the people, he's a new king, then the people will have allegiance to him as king, they will accept him as king, they will walk along with him as king, okay? Then Rehoboam goes to the his own peers, you know, people his own age, and what do they say? Man, don't do that. You know, don't relax things for them. Exert your authority. Show that you are king. You know, make the labor hard for them. And who does Rehoboam listen to? His peers, you no know, people of his same age. So when the people come back after three days, he says, I am not going to relax anything. I'm going to make my father made you work this. I'm going to work, make you work harder. And what happened? It resulted in the division of the kingdom. Some people, you know, most of the tribes followed Jeroboam. Only two tribes followed Rehoboam. Okay. So it's important for us to listen to godly people who have. Uh, you know, experience and who can counsel us. One example we look at here is First Corinthians chapter seven, verses ten to fourteen. Paul is talking about um, marriage, and he says, "Not I, but the Lord." He says, "I am not telling you to do this, but God is telling you to do this." And then in verse twelve, he says, uh, "It's I who is telling you, but not the Lord." So first he's giving them counsel about something and he says, okay, this is not my counsel, but this is the Lord's counsel. And then he goes on in verse 12 and he says, if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she's willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. So he says, this is not what God is telling, but this is my own uh, counsel to you. Then verse 25, he says, he's talking about virgins and he says, I have no commandment from the Lord, yet I give you the judgment. So again, here he is giving his judgment because he has not received any command from the Lord. So why is, you know, he's saying here in two places, it's not the Lord, but it's my own counsel. It's, I have not heard any commandment from God, but this is my judgment. Paul is saying this because he says, you know, he knows that God has counted him trustworthy. So when times he can make, give his own counsel and judgment because he knows, you know, God has counted him trustworthy. So he says, I am giving you this counsel. Okay, this godly counsel is, um, uh, you know, from me because I, I can give it to you and I can surely write and tell you to do this because God trusts me, okay, to give you this advice. And why does God trust Paul? Because, you know, uh, Paul um, is somebody who is walking with God. He uh, has a deep knowledge about God, deep revelations that God has revealed to him. And based on all of these things, he's saying, I'm giving you this counsel. I'm giving you this judgment. And I can give it to you, even though I have not heard from God. Why? Because God trusts me. Because you know, I'm basing all of my counsels and judgments on my walk with God, my knowledge with him, my understanding of the ways of God. Okay? So it's important for us to receive counsel from you know, men and women who are, you know, experienced in their walk with God. Now, there are a couple of um, passages here from Proverbs 5.23, uh, Proverbs 10, 17, 11, 14, 15, 22, 20, 20, uh, 18, and Proverbs 24, 6, which I want you to read as a, you know, as a, as a small homework, you can read it. You know, it just tells us what happens if we don't listen to godly counsel. We'll go astray. We lack instruction, you know, uh, we will not be in safety, uh, things will go out of place, okay? So God uses godly men and women to guide us and lead us. Uh, we'll stop here, we look at the examples, some biblical examples. I've already given you one example, uh, but we'll look at Moses' example and his father-in-law Jethro's example uh, when we uh, resume class next week, okay? So any questions? from these three guideposts that we looked at. Recognizing the grace of God, recognizing the leading of the Holy Spirit, recognizing the circumstances, and recognizing godly 
Council. Any questions? Okay, anyone from our uh, online students or in-person students, anyone has any questions? No? Okay, if there is no questions, then um, thank you everyone for uh, joining class. Okay, I'll see you next week. Thank you everyone.